Welcome to our Sunday morning service from Nid Valley Methodist Circuit. I am a Reverend Moses. I am one of the minister at this circuit. If you are a visitor, uh, if your first time you stumbled upon this website, special welcome. I hope you find this service as a blessing and encouraging your walk with God. Today is the 2nd of May and as a circuit, we've been going through this series called Methodist Way of Life. And this is our third week. First week, we focused on uh, worship and second week, we focused on learning and caring. And today, this week, we will be focusing on service. And also in the Methodist calendar, that it's happened to be a vacation Sunday too. So it fits in really well. And we will be exploring and uh, thinking about what it means called by God. What is our vacation? What God is calling you in this particular time? As we ponder, and let's focus our mind to worship God. And uh, as I'm going to start this service, I'm reading a few passages from Psalm chapter 9. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we offer our praise and thanksgiving on this special day. We bring before you our every thoughts, our worries and fear and anxious feelings. And also our joy, our future. Lord, you mold our prayer and our songs according to your will. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us. Lord, let our prayer be said before you as an incense. Let our words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable and pleasing to you, my rock and my redeemer. Lord, we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene, and I wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned and free.
Let us pray. Father God, we come to you with songs of praise and thanksgiving for everything that you have created within us, around us and for us. We are overwhelmed by the diversity of life, of people and of nature that we witness every day. In this season of spring, we are drawn to the many signs of rebirth and renewal. Blossom on the trees and in the hedgerows. Lambs frolicking in the fields. Masses of daffodils lining the verges. Birds collecting nesting materials. The reappearance of butterflies and bees. Creative God, we thank you. We thank you that the human interaction that's been missing during lockdown is beginning to ease and we can start to see our friends and loved ones again while still social distancing. We're reminded of the importance of human relationships in your plan for us, your people, of care and concern, of compassion and aid of simply being there for each other in times of need. Loving God, we thank you. Forgive us when we fall short of our calling as your people and continue in our selfish ways. Help us to pause, to look around and refresh our hearts and minds to the wonders of your creation. You are maker of all that was, that is, and is yet to be, and worthy of never ending praise. We ask these prayers in the name of Jesus and through his grace and resurrection promise. Amen. Our reading this morning is taken from John chapter 15, verses 1 to 12. Jesus, the true vine. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. <clears throat> I am the vine, you are the branches. 
Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
when we hear the word vacation or calling we tend to think it sometimes it feels like it takes our time or it stresses out or is it extra job that we need to do or maybe you tend to think that it is for for some special people but bible teaches us that every christian has a vacation a calling we are all are called to do his purpose his will c.s lewis says like this to walk out of god's will is to walk into nowhere and that's an interesting sentence to walk out of god's will is to walk into nowhere and that's why it's important to find out what is our calling what is our vacation and this vacation has two important aspects one as we read in the scriptures is that connecting with god and the other connecting with others bible uses the image of vine and the branches unless you connected with the vine you cannot bear fruit so i'm going to explain these two points hopefully by cooking curry and a simple recipe hopefully by the end of my talk you will remember this two points if not at least you will remember how to cook a simple curry and that's my hope and pray when you are cooking curry the most important thing to remember is to know your ingredients and to follow the steps there is order that you do there is a method in madness you don't chuck everything in it at the same time and boil and hoping for the best i'm sure it will turn into stew if that's what you are hoping for that's a good news but if you are making curry you need to follow the steps sometimes it doesn't make sense but when you follow the steps in the end when it come out as a curry you will know how this whole of ingredients came together and it will make sense when we look at these ingredients everything has a place and a distinct purpose you see some of them for aroma just for the smell and some of them for the color it's add the color and others for good for health and others for purely for good taste when we say we are called to be connected with god which means we are called to follow jesus and his footsteps with obedience so that we can hear he hear his voice and feel his consistent nudges by his mercy you might be asking a question like this what is god calling me to do in this particular time where do i fit in where is my talents fits in with my local church or in my work or in god's world where does it fit in how can i be useful do you remember the story of feeding the 5000 that jesus fed with through five loaves and two fishes the interesting thing about in that miracle is the miracle happens not when the food left jesus' hands but disciples hands can you see it miracle happens when the food left disciples' hands that shows when we are willing to serve god 
God does the rest. Sometimes we fail to recognize that vacation because we are too scared, because we doubt it, or because it feels inadequate, too small. Possibly because that vacation is in the seed form, but that need to be sown, then it will multiply. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You see, that's a passage. Whenever you feel inadequate, remember that passage. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God will do it when we are willing to step out, when we are willing to serve. When you are connected with God, every experience we go through or gone through, every knowledge and skills we learned are for a particular purpose. They are to make us who we are and should be part and parcel of our calling and what we bring with us when we answer God's call. You see, when God called David the shepherd boy and made him the shepherd of his people, when God called Peter the fisherman, he made him a fisher of men. When he called Paul the argumentative lawyer, made him his advocate to the Gentiles. That is why connecting with God or abiding in Christ is the important call for everyone, an important vacation for everyone. And that is how you can bear fruit and be useful to others. The second point is we are called to connect with others. We are made to live in relationship with others. When God created Adam, he said, it's not good for man to be alone. So he created Eve to be in partnership, to be in relationship. That's all from the beginning. That's what's God's plan. We are made to have relationship. One of the best thing about making curry is that every ingredients need to depend on each other in order to bring great flavor. Each one on its own doesn't taste good. In fact, some of them taste a bit strong and bitter and others a bit weak and tasteless. But together, they complement each other and bring the best out of each other. Jesus tells us there will be one flock of which he will be the shepherd. We are called to belong to each other. We are never been called to live on our own, or being independent. We cannot be ourselves on our own. We are made to live in the midst of people. We need one another in order that we can fulfill our vocation together. Together we will learn to be ourselves. And that's why Jesus said, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. We are called to love one another. And we cannot do that on our own. We are sent out into the world to love one another. And God has chosen us to live that kind of life that shows what is meant by loving other people. God has deposited each one of us something special. Our job is to recognize it, nurture it, and use it for God's glory. Even the disciples surprised to see what Jesus could do, what they had, even though it looked hopelessly insignificant. 
but God can make big. Remember C.S. Lewis' words, to walk out of God's will is to walk into nowhere. We all have a purpose. We all have a calling. I'll leave you with that question. What is your vocation? What God calling you to do? I wonder what God is calling you today. Maybe calling to do completely new thing. Or something to do with the ministry in the church. Or to be a, a lay preacher. A visitor. A pastoral assistant. A member of the choir. A small group leader. A teacher. Or helper for kids church. Or youth group. Or even to take part in a house group. Or even as an ordained person. Or maybe God is calling you to do something differently with your vacation. Or maybe, do you know somebody who you think God might be calling to a particular ministry? You might want to say a word of encouragement to them. None of us is without a calling. I wonder what is yours. Lord, you invite us in Joshua 1 verse 8 in the Old Testament to meditate on your word day and night. Let us reflect upon your word now as we offer you prayer for others and for ourselves. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. As world leaders debate how to address the issue of climate change, help us to remember we all have a stake in this planet the home you have blessed us with in a vast universe that is bigger than our human minds can really comprehend. Show us what we can do in our own lives to honour your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we are constantly reminded in the news, both in our own nation and abroad, that we do not always do as your word commands us to do, and love our neighbours as ourselves. Give us hearts of compassion that long for justice, respect and equality for all people, whatever their race, religion or gender. Help us not to fear that which makes us different, but to celebrate that which reminds us that you created all people uniquely and that you love us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, protect those who govern our nation. Help them to serve with wisdom, courage, integrity, fairness and a genuine desire to improve the lives of all the people they represent. Help us, Lord, to remember your word tells us that all the nations you have made shall ultimately come and worship before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your word tells us that when two or three gather together in your name, you will grant their requests. We pray for our circuit and district, for our ministers, local preachers and worship leaders. Bless them with creativity and make us open to where you are leading us, Lord, in exploring new styles and ideas of engaging in worship and with our communities as churches begin to reopen again.
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, your word reminds us that you are close to the brokenhearted, rescuing those whose spirits are crushed. Bring comfort to those known to us who are in trouble or distress, or mourning the loss of loved ones. Comfort our Queen Elizabeth as she continues to mourn the loss of her husband Prince Philip, and help us to remember that, whatever our station in life, we all share the common bond of grief and loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray for ourselves and for our families. God, through your word, you have commanded us to be strong and courageous and not to be afraid, for you are with us wherever we go. Be with us now, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us move forward into this coming week with hearts more open to your love, Lord, and minds ready to welcome your deep healing. In the powerful name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
and now go from this place into the world where God is at work. Be ready to respond your calling for the sake of the kingdom. As you connect with Christ, he will make you fruitful and give you life. So go with this assurance and live and serve the Lord. Amen. The blessing of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen.